Hey you, my name is Doc, and in this video, I'm going to share with you a true story that'll shock and disturb you. It's about a mom who found her son's head in a bucket in her own freaking house and the gruesome details surrounding his murder. And this is one of a brutal nature. So I have to warn you. The following broadcast contains contents of a graphic and mature nature, and it may not be suitable for some viewers. Viewer discretion is absolutely advised. But if you're brave enough, and you're here for all of the sus details, then stick around. If you love all things true crime, the odd behavior of the clearly disturbed players involved in these crimes, and every horrifying sus detail involved, then this is the content for you. I'll serve you up a great, big, fat, mostly fresh dish of suspicion-ish for your consumption. Stay tuned because the details of this murder are so heinous, I am i don't even know how we're going to get through it. But stick around. I promise you it'll be one of the most disgusting crimes that you've ever heard. This woman is said to have murdered her son, Shad Thyrian during a consensual, intimate encounter, which turned rather ugly when the female accused strangled him, dismembered his body, continued the encounter post-mortem, and then attempted to clean up after herself. However, as brilliant as this depraved human being thought she was, apparently one of the numerous mistakes that she made was when she forgot his head at the scene after she became lazy from the drugs that she was doing. That's right. She, she told the police officers that she had become lazy. According to records from the Green Bay Police Department in Wisconsin, officers discovered the head of Shad Thyrian in a bucket with his male organ. Taylor Denise Shabizness that's right, the show business. She actually chose that name because her husband's name is Warren Chabau. You heard me correctly. This one's married, and the, the victim in this crime, Jad, was her on-again, off-again lover from high school. Shabizness, 24 years old, was charged in Brown County Court with one count each of first-degree intentional homicide, mutilating a corpse, and third-degree assault of an intimate nature. According to a felony criminal complaint out of Green Bay, authorities were requested at a home in the early hours of Wednesday, February 23rd, 2022. That's right, just a couple of weeks ago. The mother of the victim, Shad, who lived at the address, reportedly found her son's severed head in a bucket in the basement. According to the reports, mom, Tara Pakanich, 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 found the severed head and genitalia covered by a towel in her home's basement. This all occurred shortly after 2.30 in the morning, after hearing her door, her screen door slammed, the storm door. Uh, mom then went to check out the noise and found a light on in the basement. So she makes her way down the stairs to turn off the light, thinking that her son was downstairs and had forgot it on and that Shabizness had left. According to reports, she went to turn the light off and upon starting to walk back up the stairs, she saw a bucket covered by a blanket or a beach towel and she pulled back the, the towel and was horrified at her discovery, as anyone would be. She immediately phoned 911, and the rest of the tale doesn't get any easier to swallow, honestly. I don't know how she had the wherewithal to call 911. I would have lost it right there, and 
I would have probably ended up in a puddle on the floor. Upon police entering the home and investigating further, more evidence was found, including dried blood stains on a nearby mattress and an apparent motive for murder. The victim's mother, Tara, informed the police that Shad was last seen with his on-again, off-again lover, Taylor Shabiznes. Police were sent to Taylor's residence where they found her at a home. <clears throat> at a home on Eastman Avenue, they said. Police revealed that she had what appeared to be dried blood on her hands, her shirt, and her pants. She was wearing all black, by the way, so that must have been a lot of blood on her clothing. So they went through her van and discovered a crock pot box with additional body parts, including legs. I can't with this one. This oh, Okay. Officers discovered a tote containing an upper torso during their investigation. Mom told the police that her son, Shad, and Shabiznes were in the basement during the day on Tuesday while she, the mom, and her partner were out of the house. She said that she woke up early Wednesday morning between 2.30 and 3 o'clock a.m. when she heard the store the storm door slam, according to the court records. Then she heard a vehicle. She assumed she business had departed. So she goes down into the basement to check. And this is when all of this gruesome discovery was transpired. According to authorities, the suspect claimed she went crazy during a drug-fueled intimate encounter with Shad. The alleged account of events according to Shabiznes, stated that the couple often used chains around their necks to intensify their intimate encounters. Imagine a choke chain for a dog. She informed police that she did not intend to kill him, but that she liked choking him and continued to do so even after his face turned purple. This is according to court documents. She allegedly described the killing as random. Because you picked him up in a Kentucky Fried Chicken parking lot? No. It's not random. You've known him since high school. You're 24. This is not random, Taylor. Shabiznes stated that she continued to perform intimate activities with the man's corpse for two to three hours post-mortem. She claimed to be in the basement with the victim from Tuesday night well into Wednesday morning before actually starting to dismember his body. I, ugh, gross. She's gross. She business responded that the police were going to have fun trying to find all of the organs. According to the prosecutors. She business also stated that all of the body parts should be in the basement. She stated that there would be a foot or a leg in the minivan as well. That's the one in the crock pot box. Detective Graff asked she business what she did with the head. And she business stated she had put the victim's head in a black bucket and put a blanket over it. This is all from the probable cause affidavit that I will be showing you in a few minutes. And I have to warn you again, this is disturbing. Trigger warning. If you can't handle gruesome, it doesn't get any easier from here. Allegedly, Taylor stated that a bread knife with a serrated blade, which she had found in the mom's kitchen upstairs, was ideal to complete the task at hand. She stated the knives should be in a black bag along with the body parts in the basement, according to prosecutors. Taylor indicated that she would use whatever bag she found in the basement to place the body parts in. She made the comment that at one point she did get kind of paranoid and lazy and that she thought it was the dope that was making her paranoid. 
No, you freaking idiot. It was the murder that was making you paranoid. Oh, my God. According to the document, she said she intended on taking all of the body parts with her, but only got the leg or foot into the van because she had become lazy. She forgot about the head. Oh, the head. I forgot about the head. Oh, shit. Wow. Shabiznis, formerly Coronado, is charged with one count each of first-degree intentional homicide, mutilation of a corpse, and third-degree sexual Online records do not name the attorney of record for Shabiznis, but reports state that her attorney told the court, Based upon the discussion I've had with my client, I have concerns regarding her ability to understand these proceedings and assist in her own defense. So he's requesting a competency evaluation for her. Taylor's bail was set at $2 million cash, and she remains in custody at the Brown County Jail. They wouldn't even let her out of the solitary cell to... Um, attend the hearing recently and did it through the little porthole in the jail door. She was emotionless, apparently, during the entire proceeding. So if the court grants the motion for a competency evaluation for her, Taylor would undergo a psychological exam to determine whether she's competent to proceed. She's scheduled to return to court on March 22nd. Let's just read the arrest affidavit to get a clear picture of the heinous and psychologically fucked up behaviors and actions that police are describing as the events that led to Shabiznis's arrest. So, the state of Wisconsin versus Taylor Denise Sha business, Coronado, Shabao. Oh my gosh. Date of birth 11 23, 1997. Five foot two and 120 pounds. Not a big person to be toting around human torsos and legs. Count one first degree intentional homicide. Repeater. The above defendant on or about Wednesday, February 23rd, 2022, in the city of Green Bay, Wisconsin, did cause the death of the victim, Shad Thyrian, with intent to kill that person. Upon conviction, shall be sentenced to imprisonment for life. And further, invoking the provisions of the statutes of Wisconsin, because the defendant is a repeater, having been convicted of battery and threat to a judge, prosecutor, or law enforcement officer in Brown County, case number 20CF998, which convictions remain of record and unreversed, the maximum term for imprisonment for the underlying crime may be increased six years if the prior conviction was for a felony, which it was. The next portion, mutilation of a corpse, again a repeater. It claims that she did mis- dismember a corpse with the intended to con- intent to conceal a crime contrary to the sections of Wisconsin statutes, a class F felony, and upon conviction may be fined not more than $25,000 or imprisoned not more than 12 years and six months or both. And because she was a repeater, the maximum term of imprisonment for the underlying crime may be increased, which I'm sure it will be. Count three, third degree assault of an intimate nature, repeater. It states that she did have an intimate encounter with Shad without that person's consent because he was deceased. 
a class G felony and upon conviction may be fined not more than $25,000 or imprisoned not more than 10 years or both. The maximum term of imprisonment for the underlying crime may be increased four years if the prior conviction was for a felony, and it was. Probable cause. The complainant, being duly sworn of oath, swears that he had had the opportunity to review the police reports from officers of the Green Bay Police Department and other documents supporting this complaint referenced herein, which are the types of reports and documents kept in the ordinary course of business which complainant believes to be truthful and reliable because they have been proven to be truthful and reliable on numerous occasions in the past. The complainant also bases this complaint upon the statements of mom, TP, who is presumed to be reliable as a citizen witness in this instance. Your complainant also bases this complaint upon the statements of Taylor Shabusiness. That's right. She started talking right away. Just started dumping all of it on them as soon as they caught her. Which were against her penal interest. The complainant further asserts that based upon his review of the referenced reports and or supporting documents, the incidents alleged occurred in Brown County, Wisconsin. The complainant's review of the report of Officer Alex Wanish of the Green Bay Police Department, which indicates that on February 23rd, 2022, at about 3.25 a.m., Officer Wanish was dis dispatched to a residence that is located in the city of Green Bay, Brown County, Wisconsin, for a report of a severed head being found in a bucket in the basement. Upon arrival, Officer Wanish met with TP, who allowed officers into the residence. Officer Wanish reports he went down to the basement. Once he reached the bottom of the stairs, Officer Wanish observed a blessed plastic but my gosh, I cannot talk, a black plastic bucket on the floor. Officer Wanish observed a shower or beach towel over the bucket. He lifted the towel and observed a human head inside of the bucket. He looked around the room and observed what appeared to be dried blood on a nearby mattress. His review of the, the district attorney's review of the court, the re, oh my God, really? Your complainant's review of the report of Officer Garth Russell of the Green Bay Police Department, which indicates that on February 23rd, 2022, Officer Russell was asked to assist by going to the residence of, on Eastman Avenue in the city of Green Bay, the residence of Taylor Shabusiness. Officer Russell gathered information that a person identified as Taylor Denise Shabusiness, date of birth 11-23-97, who was last seen with the victim, may be living at the East, Eastman Avenue address. Officer Russell also learned that there was a van associated with Shibusiness. Officer Russell reviewed a prior photograph of Taylor, and upon inspecting the van, Officer Russell saw Shibusiness emerge from the apartment building, and upon seeing officers, she stopped. Good. Stop, drop, and roll. You idiot. Officer Russell could see that Shabusiness had what appeared to be dried blood on the first. <laughs> You'll have to excuse me. I think it's mer Mercury Retrograde. I can't even say Mercury Retrograde. Are you serious right now? Officer Russell could see what Shabusiness had on. Oh, my God. See? Okay. I, I got to quit this day job that I have here. Officer Russell could see that Shabusiness had what appeared to be dried blood on the front of her black hooded sweatshirt, as well as her black sweatpants. He later found that Shabusiness's hands appeared to be smeared with blood as well, and there was also what looked like dried blood on the back of her sweatshirt, so she was covered in it. Officer Russell asked Shabusiness if she knew why officers were there, and she stated something that sounded like, uh, because of the warrant for my arrest? No, you whack job. Because you left a freaking human head in somebody else's house. 
And you didn't even cover up your crime. Like, sir. Oh, my God. Clearly, this person is not right in her head. And by that, I do not mean that she deserves an insanity defense. I mean that there are some serious underlying psychological issues that are obvious. And because who does this? Who does that? Who who can just be so nonchalant about the taking of a human life and then what she did afterwards? It's not just the taking of the life, but it's how you disrespected this man in every way, shape, and form. It's disturbing, heinous, and appalling. I digress. Your complainant's review of the report of Detective Gina Liberta of the Green Bay Police Department indicates that Detective Liberta received additional information that Tara, the mom, told patrol officers that Taylor's van, which had been parked outside of her address for a day or so, was gone. Patrol and other detectives were at an address on Eastman Avenue where the van Shabusiness had been using was parked and where Shabusiness had been taken into custody and the van was later examined. Detective Liberta reported that in the rear passenger seat, Behind the driver's seat, there was a crockpot box. Medical examiner Dr. Vincent Tranchita went to the box, which was on top of a laundry basket of clothes, and located additional human body parts, including legs. A review of the report of uh, Detective Phil Scanlon of the Green Bay Police Department indicates that Detective Scanlon summarized evidence obtained during a search warrant executed at the residence in the city of Green Bay, Brown County, Wisconsin, where Shad was located. Detective Scanlon reports that during the search, a human head, severed from the neck, was located in a bucket in the basement near the stairs. The head was identified visually in comparison with the prior photograph of Shad, and it was confirmed to be Shad. According to Dr. Tranchita, there was visual evidence of strangulation observed. Also located in the same bucket was Shad's male organ, along with body fluid and two knives. Other body parts were found in the basement in other bags, including plastic shopping bags, along with three knives including a bread knife consistent with the kitchen knives. Located in a storage tote, an upper torso was located. The upper torso had numerous rigid cuts at the site where the head had been removed, consistent with the separated head. Also located in the tote was a carving knife, consistent with the kitchen knife, and several internal organs. Also, I told you this was going to be gruesome. Also located in the search was what appeared to be significant blood staining on an unsheeted top bed mattress, along with what appeared to be a site of previously cleaned up blood on a concrete surface next to and under a significant portion of the bed. Evidence of drug use was observed in the open on top of the entertainment center, including a glass pipe and a gem bag containing light-colored powdered material. Also observed was evidence of blood around a stand-up shower located in the unfinished portion of the basement, and what appeared to be numerous blood drops were visible on the concrete floor in front of the shower that appeared to have been partially wiped or washed away. She didn't try too hard. Thank God. Detective Scanlon reports that during the search, he stayed in contact with Detective Graff and Detective Kempf, who at the time were questioning Taylor Shabusiness. Detective Scanlon reports that based on Shabusiness's statements and officers' observations at the scene, Detective Scanlon found the information Shabusiness was saying to be consistent with the officers' findings during the search of 
Taylor's victim's mom's basement. So Tara's basement. Reports of Detective David Graff of the Green Bay Police Department indicate that on February 23rd, 2022, Detective Graff reports he met with the victim's mom, Tara Pankinich. Pankinich. I can't say it right, sorry. Tara stated that around 9.30 p.m. on Monday, February 21st, 2022, Taylor Shabiznes came and picked up the victim. Tara stated that that was the last time she saw Shad alive. Tara stated that her boyfriend told her that sometime on Monday night into Tuesday morning, February 22nd, Shad and Shabiznes returned to the home and went into the basement. Tara believed that Taylor and the victim were in the basement during the day on Tuesday. Tara stated she did not go into the basement, but she did recall hearing Shabiznes talking at one point. Tara stated she and her boyfriend were out of the house during the day on Tuesday, leaving Taylor to do whatever she wanted with Tara's son, Shad. Tara stated there was a minivan parked on the road in front of the house during the time, and she was not sure if, Shabiz- if it was Shabiznes's. Tara stated that sometime between 2.30 and 3 a.m. that morning, February 23, 2022, she was awoken by a storm door being slammed. Tara stated that she heard a vehicle and she assumed it was Shabiznes. She stated that she got out of bed and saw the light in the basement was still on. She went to see if, if Shad was still there because she thought Shabiznes had left. Tara went into the basement and she didn't see anyone. So she started to walk back up the stairs, and that's when she noticed the bucket next to the bottom of the stairs. Tara stated she removed the bucket, the blanket from the bucket and discovered her son's head. Detective Graff reports he was then informed that Taylor Shabiznes was located by patrol officers and brought to the station. Officer Russell informed Detective Graff that Shabiznes had a large amount of what he believed to be blood on her clothing. Detective Graff observed Shabiznes had a cut on her left thumb. He also observed some scratches on her arms and hand that, according to Shabiznes, were self-inflicted. Okay, Taylor. Graff also noticed on Shabiznes' hand a red substance stain that Detective Graff believed to be blood. Detective Graff spoke with Taylor after advising her of her rights, told Shabiznes that a few hours ago, officers were sent to a residence in Green Bay in which the head of the victim was found. Shabiznes' response was, that's pretty fucked up. You think? Really? Detective Graff asked Shabiznes if she knew the victim, and she said she did. At least she didn't deny it. And- try wasting the taxpayers' dollars and all of our time. Detective Graff confirmed with Shabiznes that she lives on Eastman Avenue and the van that was located there was her roommate, ST's van. Detective Graff confirmed with Shabiznes that she drove ST's van to Eastman Avenue earlier in the morning. He asked her where the rest of the victim's body was and Taylor stated that it was still in the basement. Detective then asked her to tell him what happened, and Shabiznes' first comments to him were that, that's a good question, because she had blacked out during that time. Detective asked Shabiznes if it was just her and the victim in the basement, and she said that it was and that nobody else had come down. Well, thank God. And I wish that Shad's mom had never had to come down and witness what she saw. Shabiznes stated that she and Shad were smoking the bitch, which Detective Graff was able to clarify with Taylor that he believed she was referring to methamphetamines. Shabiznes stated that the victim had a chain that he had put around his own neck. She stated they were going to get to an intimate encounter at that point. The strangulation was part of that act according to Taylor. 
Taylor stated she and the victim had used strangulation during intimate encounters in the past. I'm not throwing shade at anybody in regards to their sexual proclivities. I'm not shaming anybody in regards to their sexual proclivities. If that's what you want to do, that's fine. But it doesn't have to end in death. Okay, Taylor? Death is off the table when it comes to consent, consensual, intimacy, all of the above. (sighs) Detective Graff asked Taylor questions about her using ST's minivan and asked if she and Shad had contact with anybody when they first got back to the house. Taylor then made the statement, damn, the head, and oh my God, I can't believe I left the head though, referring to Shad's head. Wow. Wow. Detective Graff then asked Taylor where the rest of the body was, and she stated it was in the basement. Taylor responded that the police were going to have fun trying to find all of the organs as she dismembered the body. Because that's fun. That's, that's leisurely relaxing. That's what we all want for our downtime. Like, what's wrong with you? She business stated all of the body parts should be in the basement. She stated that there should be a foot or a leg in the minivan. The detective asked Taylor what she did with the head, and she stated she had put Shad's head in a black bucket and put a blanket over it. The detective asked how Taylor dismembered the body. She stated she used knives that she had obtained from the kitchen of the residence and that a bread knife worked ideally because of the serrated blade. You think? Do you think at all, Taylor? Shall business? Do you, do you think at all? Because this is unreasonable, irrational, delusional, depraved, heinous, unbelievable, incomprehensible. I could go on. But I digress. Taylor indicated that she would use whatever bag she found in the basement to place the body parts into. She made the comment that at one point she did get paranoid and lazy and she thought it was the dope that was making her paranoid. Here we go again. Taylor described she and Shad were in the basement and that Shad produced two chains, one for him and one for her. Well, let's put the one for her around her neck right now, why don't we? That'd be great. Taylor described the chains at the time as being chain link and silver. She would later describe the chains as being like a dog choke collar. Taylor stated she just went crazy, referring to strangling Shad. At one point during the interview, she business stated she would feel the victim's heart beating still as she was choking him. So she kept pulling and choking him harder. But he would not die and that he just kept rebuilding into muscle. Yep, that's one of the delusions I was talking about. Yep. That happens when you do too, too, too much meth. Like, you, that's what happens. Don't do drugs. Detective Graff asked at what point did she know that the victim was not alive anymore. Taylor stated that Shad's face had turned purple. Blood was coming out of his mouth, but she did not stop. Detective Graff asked what she did after Shad died. Taylor stated that she then, quote unquote, played with his body. And that means exactly what you think it means. Taylor stated she performed orally on the victim's organ and that she had used a intimate toy that she put in Shad's mouth. And then in Shad's lower orifice. Detective Graff asked Shabiznis if when she was choking Shad, if he tried to fight back at all. Taylor stated that he did. Well, no shit he did. He knew what was going south quick. Make it make sense. Make it make sense to me. This this makes no sense to me. I'm so shocked and appalled by this entire crime. 
I can't imagine how the family of either one of these people are feeling in the slightest. My heart breaks for this whole event. This, this is just shocking. Taylor stated that she and a friend picked up the victim in ST's minivan. After picking up drugs, the three went to the Eastman Avenue apartment of she business. She stated that she, her friend, and Shad smoked marijuana and that she and Shad smoked some meth. Taylor's friend left. Taylor reported that she then shot up herself and Shad with Trazodone, which is a very heavy-duty mental health drug. It is a sedative of sorts, and one would think it would counteract amphetamines. But being a mental health practitioner, I can tell you that is not the case. It would cause what we would call a cyclothymic episode which means back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, up, down, up, down, up, down, as far as upper, lower. So manic, calm, manic, calm. So it does not counteract one another, but I have never heard of anyone shooting up trazodone. It typically puts people to sleep very quickly. Taylor stated that she and Shad left her apartment on Eastman Avenue and drove over to Shad's mom's house in ST's minivan. They immediately went to the basement. Taylor stated that victim, the victim's mother's boyfriend, so Shad's mom, Tara's boyfriend, let her and Shad into the house. Taylor stated that it was about five minutes after they arrived that Shad pulled out the chains. Taylor then stated she began to choke Shad and described it as Shad lying face down on the bed with her on top of him, pulling on the end of the chain. Shad coughed up blood and she was just waiting for him to die while she was watching his face. Taylor made the comment that she was already this far, so she just kept on referring to choking Shad. Taylor said in a lower tone of voice, Yeah, I liked it. <clears throat> Yuck. Detective Graff believed her to be referring to when she was choking Shad. She business stated she thought it took between three and five minutes for the victim to die. Detective Kempf clarified with Taylor that when, the, when Shad began to cough up blood, She just did keep on choking Shad because she wanted to see what happens. Taylor made comments that she blacked out while choking Shad, but when she woke up, he was already purple, so she just kept going. Taylor stated she enjoyed choking him and made comments to detective asking if they knew what it was like to love something so much that you kill it. No, 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 I fucking don't. Nope. And I bet the detectives don't either. No, we don't, Taylor. Uh Uh-uh. Nope. That'd be a no. Taylor stated she played with the victim's body for like two or three hours, which included oral and using toys in his orifices. Ya gross. Detective Graff clarified with Taylor that she was in the basement with the victim all during the day of Tuesday into Tuesday night and into Wednesday morning and then dismembered Shad's body. Yep, that's right. Yep. All day. She did this all day. You can stay all day. 
Taylor stated that the plan was for her to bring all of the body parts with her, but she got lazy and only ended up putting the leg and foot in the van, and she forgot the head. Taylor made comments that she did not mean to kill Shad, but she was while she was choking him, she liked it, and she would just keep doing it. Taylor also made the comment that she was not prepared as killing the victim was random. Taylor stated that she had Shad's body on the bed in the basement, and she pulled him to the edge of the bed, put the black bucket underneath his head as she was cutting it off. Taylor also talked about using a bucket and a tote to catch his blood and that she would use the shower in the basement to dump out the bucket. Taylor was asked if she thought it was the right thing to do and her comment was that she did it anyway, referring to killing Shad. We know you did it anyway. Fucking demon. <sighs> Let's take a look at who this bitch is, shall we? This is the house where Shad was murdered. I'm sure Tara and her boyfriend and Tara's family, Shad's siblings, will never want to visit that house again. Every childhood memory that they had in this house if they were there long-term, I, I have no idea. They're gone. A mother shouldn't be expected to go back to that house after what she discovered. Wouldn't you agree? I'll take that as a yes. Uh, clearly... This is a really sick situation and utterly deplorable. The whole neighborhood has been affected by what Taylor Shabusiness did. That house will likely be torn down because there, there will never be anybody who will want to live there. I hope that there are not gawkers driving by like with the Chris Watts case. I hope. I, I'm assuming that there are because we saw what happened with Gabby Petito and Brian Laundry. People will, walk, will drive by. And this is a small town. It's 100,000 people. I mean, Green Bay, Wisconsin, everybody knows about Green Bay, but it's not, it's not Milwaukee. It's a, it's a smaller town. Everybody knows everybody. This is the heinous and depraved bitch that committed this disgusting act and took the life of Shad way too early. On the left, you see her mugshot. And on the right, you see a glamorized version without the meth mite source all over her face. She alleges that her father brutally abused her as she was growing up. It's alleged. I don't know it to be true. I have not verified that, but that's what's alleged. Her mother died when she was a young child, and she was raised by her father. I do know that. That still doesn't give you any right to take someone else's life, Taylor. You don't get to abuse someone else because you were abused. That's not how this works. You stop the cycle. You get therapy. You do everything you can to become a better person. Not a killer. This is what she looked like during a recent court appearance. They wouldn't even let her out of the cell. She, she has such a nonchalant look on her face. There's no emotion 
there is no remorse. There's, there's nothing on her face other than evil. It's just disgusting. She apparently had a fascination with Jeffrey Dahmer, an obsession, they say. His crimes, his life, she was obsessed with him. Was this her male role model? Ugh. Gives you chills. So on the left here, we have an unglamorized, no meth mites or Taylor Shabizness. And on the right, we have Mrs. Taylor Chabau and her husband, who is currently serving prison time for an unrelated charge, but he has a very extensive criminal history. She's a, she's a small one. Little girl, I don't know how she managed to do what she did. So the charges here from 2020, resisting or obstructing an officer. And she apparently, she threatened a judge, probation officer, police officer, or prosecutor, somebody, and was charged and found guilty of a felony at that point. They also charged her with a probation violation uh, on the date of this crime. So, you can see all of her charges outlined there. The resisting or obstruction, as you can see, is a misdemeanor, and all of the rest are felonies. This is Shad Thyrian. Thyrian. Very young. Looks like he's full of life. Looks like he had a, a long road ahead of him. Plenty of years left. And as, as a mom of a child who has struggled with substance abuse, I can tell you that we never give up hope. There is always a glimmer of hope somewhere inside of you. And though Shad may have been making some poor decisions and using substances, I can tell you that we as moms always have the memories of the very first time that we held our child naked against us. And we go to that to call up the wherewithal that we need in order to witness the path of destruction that they're going down and have hope that they will someday come to their senses and stop the madness. We always remember the first time we smelled them, the top of their head, the first time we kissed their forehead. We remember those things and that hope is what allows us to continue. Tara had that hope. Who's to say if Shad would have continued on a bad path for the rest of his life, or if he would have, you know, slid into recovery and done wonderful things. But Taylor Shabiznis took that away from him and Tara and his father and all of their, his siblings and loved ones, a tragedy beyond what the heart can even fathom. We have a couple more photos of Shad, looking like a smart ass, to be honest with you, I can only imagine that he had a very sarcastic sense of humor. I don't know him personally, but that's the kind of guy he looks like to me. So if I'm wrong and you know him, please let me know. But he looks like he was a lot of fun, regardless of his life choices. This was one of the poor choices. These are directly from Taylor Coronado Shabao Shabusiness's Facebook and Instagram, looking like she is number one in her book, right? 
That's not what her mugshot looks like now. Lord. You can see at the bottom of the screen there the GoFundMe information for Shad and his family. Funeral expenses, mental health help, which I'm sure many people that knew him will need. I would buy them a whole new house if I had extra money because where do you go from here? Every time she even thinks of that neighborhood, every time his sister or his friends, loved ones think of that house or drive by it or anything, they're, they're going to be re-traumatized every single time. This will be a lifelong trauma. I hope that they can overcome the grief and the loss and the trauma that they've experienced. And I, I pray for them that they will be able to move forward with their life at some point without this tragedy seeping in and killing their spirit. A month and 10 days prior to this crime, Taylor Shabusiness writes on her Facebook Went off and told an addict, I'll never stop buying you dope so I can sit back and watch you die. Wow. So, were you talking about Shad? Is this evidence of premeditation? Is this who you were at least a month before, if not your entire life? It's appalling. You can see here it's made public. It's a public post. Who says that? Who says that? This is a post by Shad just five days before his death. How could this happen to somebody? How could you do this to someone? Goodbye. I don't like where this went. Did he feel the evil coming from her and was trying to stop it? Was this directed at Taylor Shabusiness? One could only assume. Did he, did he have a premonition that this was not going to end well? Well, the next day he says, well, you took my happiness for now and I recommend you stay away. I'm not here to make you happy. I'm here to live, as they call it. It sounds like he was trying to disengage. And how prophetic for him to say live in quotation marks. This is unbelievable. And if this was directed at Taylor just a few days before Shad's death, clearly he felt something bad coming. This is Shad's obituary. Shad Rock Thyrian, 24, passed away unexpectedly on Wednesday, February 23rd, 2022. He was born September 7th, 1997, 7797, and he died on 22322. Uh, a lot of repeating numbers going on there. Enchanted Life Path, if you're out there. It's, it's a strange one. In Green Bay, Wisconsin, to Tara and Michael. She had attended Howard Suamico schools as a child and later worked with his father and grandfather at their family businesses. She had enjoyed camping, games, and spending time with his family. He was a very kind and compassionate person who often thought of others before himself. A talented artist, he also enjoyed wood carving. He's always got a smile on his face in these photos, a smirk or a smile, right? Please consider donating to the GoFundMe. I will leave a link directly to it in the description below so that you can do that. Let me show you this Facebook stream oh, memorial thing. And again, it kind of looks like he's a funny guy, likes to smile and laugh and joke. 
he will be greatly missed, I'm sure, by many people. Just so tragic. I will absolutely keep you updated on this case. Taylor is set to return to court on the 22nd of March. And I will be watching. I will do everything I can to be on top of the court records, try to get the interrogation tape, and everything that I can to keep you updated on this case. This is one I will definitely be following. So if you like the content here, and you think that I added some kind of value or something of importance, please feel free to hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, ring that little bell. Leave a comment below and tell me how you feel about knowing that Taylor Shabiznis had already been charged with a felony. And she was currently, at the time of her arrest, supposed to be wearing an ankle monitor, which she had removed. She spent two days with Shad without that monitor. Who was monitoring her? And don't you think that those two days worth of no movement from the monitor wherever she left it would have been an indication that she was in the wind? Is that why she went back to her house to pick up the monitor and move it around? Leave a comment below. Tell me your theories. I want to hear this. Thanks for joining me today, regardless of the gruesome details. Thank you for bringing awareness to this disturbing crime. Not enough people are talking about Shad and what he experienced at the hands of this monster. Share this so that other people know exactly what kind of disturbing events Tara caused and the trauma she Im imparted upon anybody that knew Shad. I'll talk to you again soon. This is Doc. And I hope that you come back.